the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola very warm welcome to the VR show the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail today we are going to continue the theme of interviews and we have the former Leeds United player and former English international Mr Tony Dorigo with us so without wasting much time I would like to first thank Tony for coming on the show thank you so much and welcome to the show and I would like to begin by asking you how are you and what are you doing during this pandemic period Uh, fortunately, I'm fine. Everything is is uh, is good. But yeah, certainly uh, in the UK, it is very difficult. Uh, you know, so many people uh, have died and have still got it. So uh, we're still uh, dealing with it. But it certainly is getting better and better. So we're coming out of lockdown. But it's been a long time now. Uh, I'm not sure how many weeks, ten weeks, twelve weeks. Um, it's been difficult. But I think finally we're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel because football is about to to start again. So it started in Germany. Uh, but it's starting again in Italy, of course, in Spain, and uh, here in England. So the two top leagues uh, finally will get out on that pitch. No crowds, but at least we've got something to look forward to. But yeah, it's been a, a long, difficult time, uh, and I have been trying to fill my my days with all sorts of different things. But um, one of the main things I've done is cycling. I now cycle five, six times a week. I'm now going to enter the Tour de France. I think. I think that's the next step. <laughs> uh, no, it's just been something, something to do. But. Uh, Yeah, you know, lots of I suppose talk about um, you know World Cup 1990 and Leeds winning the championship and all the good moments. Uh, we're all reminiscing, so it's been a, a nice time as well to remember lots of good things. So I'll talk about a lighter topic that is football in comparison to what's happening around the world. So you know, like I'll talk about your career first. You know, like uh, from writing to 14 top flight clubs for a trial to winning the league with Leeds United and going to represent England in the international stage. How has the journey been for you? Ah, uh, it's been um, a complete dream, you know, absolutely. Because I'm sure, like a lot of your listeners, like me, I was in Australia, and you're dreaming. You're dreaming about playing football. You're dreaming about going to Wembley and scoring a goal. You're dreaming about all these great things, you know, winning the league. Um, and I had that dream, and I followed it. And I, I left Australia when I was 15. Uh, Really difficult because England is so cold, so cold. Australia is so lovely and warm, but it was difficult. But fortunately, everything worked out really, really well, and uh, I was very determined. Need a bit of luck as well, and uh, yeah, I had a fantastic career, which uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. I had this doubt. Did you really write to fourteen clubs? Yes, I did. I wrote to fourteen clubs, um, which was crazy. It was crazy because I just picked. The top 14. I, I left the bottom six. I thought, oh, they're rubbish. We'll just go for the best ones. And uh, I just said how good I was, and, uh, and I said I would pay my way over, so that it wouldn't cost me anything. Uh, I think at 15 to 16 was a good age as well. They could still mould me and, and train me. But um, yeah, and only got one letter back. Only one letter, and that's from Aston Villa. And when that envelope turned up with the claret and blue. Emblem on the front. Oh my God! I went crazy. I went absolutely crazy. And they gave me a four-day trial. They wouldn't let me stay on a Friday because I was going to get in the way for the games on the Saturday. So I could only have four days. So my dad and me, we we left for four days at Aston Villa, and and that was my chance. But you know what? That's all you need. You just need a chance. So definitely, you went on to represent Villa for a very long time, and then I'll talk about your second. Club that was Chelsea, whom you represented in more than 100 games, you know. But it unfortunately, or uh, it did not end the way you would have hoped for at Chelsea. How do you look back at your time at Chelsea? Uh, Chelsea, um, I really enjoyed my time at Chelsea. I played. A very, very good team and some really good players. So if you think of. You know, Kerry Dixon was there. Uh, Gordon Jury, England international, Scottish international, Pat Nevin, Eddie Nzveski, the Welsh goalkeeper. So we had a wonderful team, um, but outside influences really affected us on the pitch. So I felt sorry for our manager, John Hollands, at the time. Uh, the chairman, Ken Bates, he liked to rule the club and do everything. And uh, for me, that caused one or two problems. And um, 
Portugal got relegated, uh, which was which was awful. Uh, then the following year, uh, we won the, the, the championship. We won it by 14, 15 points. Um, I scored seven goals from fullback. That's how bad it was. <laughs> we, we were a very good side. So we got promoted and then um, we finished, I don't know, eighth or something like that. But I wanted to try and win things. And I just felt that at Chelsea at that time, it was going to be very difficult to do that because not everyone was pulling in the same direction. But I, I think um, the decision certainly, it wasn't a financial one. Uh, the fans were fantastic. The support we got everywhere was incredible. But I just felt that, you know, coming eighth, ninth, uh, wasn't good enough. I needed to go somewhere where I felt, you know what, we're going to try and win and everyone is going the right direction. You may not do it, but at least if everyone is trying, then that for me is what was needed. So, of course, after Chelsea, you moved to Leeds where you won the league title. How was your time at Leeds United? Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. That first season uh, was, was clearly like a dream. If you, if you look at um, Leeds, when I signed, the year before they came fourth in the, uh, the top division, uh, the year before that, they won promotion. And Val Wilkinson, the manager, we kept adding and getting better and better players. And the quality he brought into the club uh, was perfect timing. And Gordon Strachan, I think, was certainly the catalyst of that. Then Gary McAllister came, then Chris Faircock came, then John Lukic came. These are all players that have played at the very, very highest level. Uh, and then my season, when I joined, uh, I came uh, from Chelsea, Rod Wallace, uh, came from Southampton, who was scoring you know, bucket loads of goals. England international Steve Hodge uh, turned up as well. So all these players added to what they had, and they finished fourth. I know what the crowds like when I played against them. Because wow, that was the noise was crazy. It was a difficult place to go. So I thought, yeah, and they really, really wanted me. So I thought, yep, yeah, let's give it a go. But we started well, strong, and we just got better and better. And uh, yeah, that was a. A wonderful, wonderful year with some great players. So definitely one of the goals that I really liked of yours, I think it was your first home game, the free kick you scored. So it was amazing. Yeah, yeah well, I scored, I scored, I think only three goals, but all of them were, were crackers. <laughs> they were really good. Yeah, and the one there was, a, it actually was a, a half volley uh, from the edge of the box in Manchester City. Yeah. And um, I never struck it any sweeter and it just bent into the top corner. The keeper didn't even move. Uh, and it was great, but it was more remembered that game for, for David Batty's goal, which he hardly ever scored, but he scored at home for the first time. And my God, it was like an earthquake. I never heard the sound. And it was a decent goal. Mine was a lot better, but I tell you what, the noise that they made for Bats. And that's when I knew, you know what, this, this crowd is something special because David Batty was a Yorkshire player, you know, born and bred, a young lad coming through. And they, they really uh, admire that. The local players playing for Leeds United, but also the grit and determination. If you give everything for the Leeds fans, they'll give everything to you. And uh, I, I soon worked that one out. It was great. So you know, like uh, talking of the title-winning season, I think one 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 more major catalyst was in January when you got a certain French player by the name of Eric Cantona. How was he? Uh, yeah, Eric. I think. Again, when you're trying to win a championship, sometimes certain moments change games and, and change the course of things. Uh, we needed a player like that. So Eric uh, came in and he scored some uh, important goals. Not a lot, but he scored some important goals. Um, but I knew Eric from playing uh, with, I played for England under 21s against France under 21s at Highbury. And I remember this game and we drew 2-2. And this guy up front for France scored both, and that was Eric Cantona. I thought, who is this guy? And then, lo and behold, a few years later, we become teammates at Leeds. And um, I have to say, he was ultra professional. You know, his training and the way he went about things was very good. Um, he couldn't speak English very well. So that was, was difficult, but he was such a talented uh, player and a clever player that on the pitch, you understood exactly, you know, how he played and, and what was required. Um, he then, his English became better and better until he started falling out with the manager and then he suddenly, his English got lost again. He couldn't understand anything. But I must admit that you could see he had some great talent. But just the way that we played, um, you know, he was no good playing right wing or right midfield or he had to be the out and out striker. He had to play around him. 
And sometimes you had to forego what he couldn't do and certainly enjoy what he could do. But for our manager, I think, you know, no one couldn't do something. You, everyone had to do exactly what they were told. And I think Eric and the manager, that's where there was a bit of a problem. So, you know, like, I think uh, when you all got Eric, uh, it was labeled as a big risk, you know, like that time getting Eric. I think he had gone on trial with Sheffield Wednesday and I think it didn't work out, whatever. Like, how, what was your first impression of him, Eric? No, the, the first impression uh, was always very, very good. You know, he was uh, obviously always on time. Uh, training was, you know, excellent. Um, he actually went to Sheffield Wednesday, you're right. Um, and the manager there was Trevor Francis. And I do lots of uh, work, uh, TV with Trevor. And I always uh, have a go at Trevor and say, ah, you missed out on Eric, didn't you? Because you offered him a trial and he didn't want to trial. And Trevor says, no, 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 it wasn't a trial but the pictures were frozen and we just wanted to see Eric play. So I said, well, that's a trial. <laughs> that's why you missed out on him. So Lee said, yeah, come on, we'll have you. Uh, and it was job done. But no, I always found him ultra professional and uh, he had some great talent. There was one goal he scored actually in training, which I'll never, ever forget. And we were playing, I think it was 8v8. So imagine a big pitch, but the goals are moved forward to the edge of the 18 yard box. So it's a bit smaller. Uh, and our keeper threw it over arm out on an angle towards the halfway line. And Eric was running out to get the ball and it was dropping over his right shoulder from the goalkeeper. Before it hit the ground, he volleyed it straight 40 yards into the top corner and scored. Like a goal that you would not believe. Normally, when anyone scores a goal like that in training, you run around like an idiot. You, you start shaking. He just jogged back to the halfway line and said, OK, let's go. This is what I do. I'm thinking, oh, my God, if you do this all the time, we're, we're all good. But yeah, he, he had some ability. But I think trying to get that ability out of him on a consistent basis, um, you know, we found that a little bit more difficult, obviously, when he went on to Manchester United. They built that team around him. He was the Pied Piper, and they had lots of willing runners uh, that would sacrifice certain things for Eric, and, and it worked the treat. Yeah. So you spoke of the goal that Eric scored in training. Was it better than your screamer at City? Yeah, I've never seen a goal like it. I mean, only because no one expected him to do it. It's like sometimes you think, what just happened then? The goalkeeper, in the, I think John Lukic was in our goal, the reserve goalkeeper, he was, little, you know, like thinking, OK, he's going to control it now. And by the time he realised, oh, he's not controlling it, he was in the back of the net already. <laughs> I remember the manager and the coach going, what just happened then? OK, let's play on, you know. So, yeah, we, we knew he had some talent. So, you know, like Leeds were the last team to win the first division and uh, you played in both the Premier League and the first division. What was the main difference between the two? Was it just, just a rebranding or was the playing style of the teams changing, you know, like with the influx of foreign players? Yeah, um, rebranding, that, that's all it was. It was just a name, you know, that, that's it. I think um, the influx of foreign uh, influences was already happening, you know, a lot. We had lots of players coming in, but I think uh, the rebranding then brought more finances in to the English Premier League, which again, that made them uh, have the ability to go out and get who they wanted, whether it's a manager, whether it's a, a player uh, from foreign fields. So the, you know, the best managers and players, of course, wanted to come. So uh, I think it accelerated things, but yeah, it was just a name. And we, we had no idea, or we knew there was a, it was a lot more on the TV. <laughs> that was about it, you know. Uh, yeah, and it's grown and grown from there. The reason I asked that was because Liverpool haven't won it since then. So maybe it was something else. Well, maybe, maybe, but uh, I'm really, I'm really going to be pleased when Liverpool do win it because uh, they, they've been outstanding. And of course, when I was uh, playing and before, you think of the great Liverpool sides and some of the players. And in Europe, you know, they won the European Cup so many times. Uh, I ended up playing for Graham Souness uh, at Torino. He signed me. He was my manager. So, uh, and I do TV with him as well. But we get on great. So. Uh, I love all things Liverpool as well, so to, to finally get them back on top. But the way they play is just amazing. And uh, Jurgen Klopp, uh, you know, what a manager. So they've done a, a wonderful job. I think everyone needs to uh, 
to catch up because there's a big gap and, and they're looking very good. But looking forward to them winning it, uh, hopefully, uh, in a week or two. So, talking of Jurgen Klopp, right now, even Leeds have a very, I think, good manager. They have Marcelo Bielsa. You know, last year, unfortunately, Leeds could not get promoted. And this year, they are favourites. I think they are first and I think they are leading by one point. How much of a difference has Bielsa made? Uh, huge. Absolutely gigantic. And, it, and it's hard to um, imagine how much difference a manager can make. Um, sometimes, it, you know, it certainly takes a bit of time. You know, even if you think of the best, best managers, so Guardiola and Klopp, you know, they, they take a little time to get going. Klopp now, it's been two or three years to get to this point. Um, but Marcelo Bielsa, you know, straight away, the training uh, is completely different to what the lads have, have done before. Uh, their weight, they have all uh, lost, I suppose, between six and eight kilograms in weight. You know, they're told to, the amount of running they do, the type of training they do, the systems they work on. Um, and he has made, I think, some decent players into very, very good players. And for me, that's what a manager is all about. A manager isn't about going and spending 100 million and trying to buy the best players, you know. Yes, you need to spend in the right areas, but also with what you've got, you have to make them better. And then also the 11 players you've got, you've got to make them you know, as, as a team. And I think that's what he's done. So the style of football has been the best in 15, 20 years, no doubt. Um, the possession-based football is something very different to what we're used to. Uh, but we look a really good outfit. Everyone is together. There's a strong unity about the club. And I think last year was a huge disappointment. You know, that there's absolutely no doubt. Uh, and some players certainly didn't handle that very well. I think there's been some one or two changes. And now I see a different attitude completely. We're, we're top of the table. Um, it's funny because some of the games we've kind of thrown away as well. We could have been top by 10 points. But anyway, we're top. Third is seven points behind. And all we need to come is first or second. So the lads at the moment, <laughs> I'm supremely confident. I really am. And the boys are as well. I've talked to a few of them recently and they just can't wait to get going. And what you hear from other clubs is an excuse here, an excuse there, and oh, this doesn't work. From our lot, we want to get out on that pitch and get going. So uh, I'm really confident that finally, uh, this could be our year to get back to where I think Leeds United uh, you know, certainly belong, and that's in the Premier League. So, you know, like, uh, Leeds are a very big club, you know, and uh, it's been very difficult for them not being in the Premier League. And prior to Bielsa, like, uh, because you have been in close contact with Leeds because of your playing career, what do you think was the main problem? Why they could not get up? The first uh, issue, you have to go back to the problems uh, around the club when they went down. And of course, that's all to do with overspending. And so basically, the, the, you know, it was almost bankrupt, the club. And so the owners that kept coming in um, never quite did it for, for me personally for the right reasons. Yes, they were trying to make things better, but there was always, you know, other reasons. And I think um, it's difficult. You need not only money, but you need to have, I think, the ability to, to build and wait and understand the club. And um, the owners that we had, they kept changing and changing and changing. And we never really had that. So things got worse and worse and worse. So it's been uh, a difficult one. The crazy thing is we still get amazing crowds. We still have fantastic support. You know, even this year, we are in the championship. We are, I think, the eighth or ninth biggest supported club in the Premier League. Forget the championship. We're the biggest in the championship. But we could, you know, we're beating half the Premier League already. We're not even playing in there. So that's how big leagues are. But, of course, it's OK saying how many supporters you've got. It's how good your team is. And it's all about what happens out on that pitch. And I think uh, the new owner came in two, two years ago, two and a half years ago, Andrea Radizzani. And uh, he's Italian, he has a passion for football, uh, but he's trying to at least understand what the club is all about. And he's doing the, the best that he can. He's putting you know, money into the club, but trying to build for the future. And he took a big gamble on getting Marcelo Bielsa because he's the highest paid manager in the championship by a long way. So it's a big, big gamble, but uh, hopefully it will work out well because uh, this owner, I think, has done lots and lots of good things. And he deserves to finally get the club back to where it needs to be. So, you know, uh, hopefully whenever Leeds get promoted, that is, uh, whenever the championship is played out, when they are in the Premier League next season, what will be the most realistic target for them? 
Yeah, that's the that's. I'm trying not to look too far ahead because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, unfortunately, give any bad luck. But you're quite right, and I do keep thinking, wow, can we play the same style? Now you have to look at a team called Norwich last season. When they were in the championship, they played a, a lovely style of football, uh, possession based. They went up to the Premier League, tried to play the same way. It hasn't worked. They're entertaining to watch, but it's not winning football. So they're looking like they're going to go back down again. So, you know, are we going to be the same? Or is he going to get better players to do and play the same way that we have? I think the difference that we have, Leeds United have, compared to a Norwich or clubs like that, is that I do think we are very, very attractive uh, as an investment. Uh, I think if you're talking about big clubs to invest in, if you think Abramovich went to Chelsea, uh, you know, the, the Arabs obviously have gone to Man City, the Americans have gone to Liverpool and Manchester United, it goes on and on and on. Well, if you want to go down a few clubs, it, the next will be Leeds United. So I think Andre has done well, but I think there's other uh, bigger investors in the background that would like to come in and uh, support financially the club. Uh, and if that does happen, then I think uh, realistically uh, we can stay up. I mean, that, that is the, always the first. But realistically, you're looking then, you know, just below mid-table, something like that would be uh, would be the aim. I mean, that would be that would be wonderful. And once you can solidify yourself there, then you start creeping up. But the problem is now, Premier League has so many levels. You know, Liverpool are out on their own. Then you have to look at, you know, the Man Cities and Chelsea's, and then probably Arsenal's and Tottenham's. Then you've got Everton's and Wolves, and so you've got all these levels to to get to because they are big steps. But I do think Leeds could uh, hit the ground running and get in that middle or just below the middle pack. So, you know, like uh, moving on from that and uh, many of your ex-teammates have uh, been successful managers. Did you ever consider getting into coaching or something? Um, I did. I got my badges. Uh, I could do it, but I went straight into the media. I got a, when I retired, I got a three-year uh, TV deal. Um, and it's a lot easier than managing. It's a lot easier. <laughs> You enjoy yourself <laughs> and that, you know, your the result on Saturday isn't the be all and end all. Your your children won't get abused at school. Your wife can walk to the shops, no problems at all. It's, I don't know. I think you need to really, really enjoy whatever you want to do. And it doesn't matter what that is, but you have to enjoy it. And I wasn't 100% convinced to go into the management and coaching side, uh, but I've always liked the media side. So uh, I went straight into TV. Uh, and now, you know, that's what I do. I go out to the Middle East. Uh, I do the Italian football commentaries. I do internationals. I go to World Cups. I do Euros. I and, and also now I'm the Leeds United ambassador. So it's great. I can come on shows like this and I can talk about it and I don't have to worry. I'm getting sacked in the morning. There we go. So, you know, like, uh, you have been very... Uh, you always joke that uh, your other teammates had to be so bad that an Australian had to come and play for England national team. So, do you think like uh, like you would have been uh, like you would wanted you wanted to be represented more or chosen more by England? Like you only represented them fifteen times. Yeah, um, I think for me, looking back now, Australia asked me to play for them uh, when I was eighteen, um, and I really wanted to because obviously I am born and bred in Australia. Um, but at that time, the international calendar wasn't aligned. So now. You know, Lionel Messi from Barcelona in Europe can go back to and play for Argentina because there's gaps in the calendars of the league. So it's, it's no problems at all. Back when I was 18, that's a long time ago, uh, it wasn't like that. And so I would have had to go to Australia for four weeks and five weeks. Well, at 18, I just got into the Aston Villa first team. So I'm now playing in the first team. I'm in the English first division. I'm going to go to Highbury to play against Arsenal. I'm going to Old Trafford to play Manchester United. And Australia asked me to go and play against New Zealand, Fiji, Tonga, or I can't even remember. And no disrespect to those countries, but, you know, the standard in the course of 18 playing uh, at Old Trafford, you know, that's, that was the thing. Uh, but I still wanted to go and play for Australia. But the manager says, Tony, are you crazy? Get out of my office. You know, you're going to be at Old Trafford and that's it. So I had no choice at, at that. But three, four years later, that's when England came to me and said, listen, please, can you wait? We'd like you to become a British citizen. Then you can choose from five years residence in the UK, which country you'd like to play for. And as England, we'd like you to play for us. 
Uh, and so that's how it came about really. Um, and listen, it's difficult. If it was a level playing field now, I would probably play for Australia, uh, but it wasn't back then. And really it was my only choice, but I'm delighted I, I took that choice because I've had some fantastic uh, experiences, you know, European Championships, World Cups, and yes, only 15 caps, but I've been, you know, all around the world for a number of years with England and it's been wonderful. So, you know, like when you look back now, what is the one moment that you still cherish, you know, like from your playing career? It's difficult to pick out one moment uh, for lots and lots of reasons. And sometimes a moment is a moment for me that feels bigger for me in my head than anyone else. And, and when you are growing up, you do have a dream. You know, there's, there's no doubt you have certain dreams. Well, I always used to watch the FA Cup final at, at Wembley. So I always thought, wow, imagine scoring a winning goal at Wembley. You know, that would be just incredible. And uh, I, I managed it for Chelsea. It was, a, it was a cup, the third cup at the time, uh, that's now no longer going. But there were 76,000 people at Wembley. I'm playing for Chelsea. I have a free kick, I put it in the top corner and we win 1-0 and I'm man of the match and all this sort of stuff and um, it's just a dream and it actually came true. You're thinking, wow, that was that was crazy, you know, that was just amazing. So that moment is, is special. Clearly, the biggest thing is winning the league over a course of time to be the best over 38 games against, you know, all the big clubs. That's amazing. But I suppose, and then another one-off one is the World Cup. You know, playing in the World Cup was great. And I played against Italy in the third and fourth place playoff. And my father's Italian, uh, but he emigrated to Australia. And my mum and dad were there watching the game as well. And I played really well, but um, I, I crossed it for David Platt to score, but we lost 2-1. Um, and after the game, I'll never forget, uh, my dad was smiling from ear to ear. He said, son, you played fantastic and Italy won. I said, no, Dad, that's wrong. <laughs> we lost, we lost. But yeah, those memories are, are wonderful. So, you know, you have, you have had so much experience playing in so many different countries and, uh, and at very high level. Uh, so, do you have any advice for any young player coming up? Do you, ex do you want them also to write letters to maybe Chelsea now? <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately now, it's become more and more difficult uh, to do that. And what the, the likes of Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester United have had is amazing scouting networks. Uh, so wherever you are, you know, you need to always be aware that someone might be watching. So the statistics uh, and uh, videos and what have you of all around the world now is, is gigantic. So there's a, there's a huge, I suppose, technological advance to, to spot these players. But one thing I would say as a young player, uh, always test yourself, but always enjoy it. You know, the, mo the most important thing is enjoy what you're doing. Uh, listen and learn and keep trying to improve because I think that's the trick. I mean, you know, never think um, that you've done enough. Always think what you could do better. And just and one example of that is when I was growing up in Australia and my father, uh, and he taught me this from a young age, I played uh, for the school, for the local school site. And we went and played a team called uh, Colonel Light Gardens. I remember this distinctly. And we won 21 nil. Okay, and I scored 14 goals. And it's only because the goals were so big and we were within eight years of age that the goalie was tiny and I was the only one that kept chipping it over the goalie. After the game, I came off and all the other mums and dads are going, oh, well done, Tony, well done, Tony. I've scored 14 goals. So I looked to my dad, I said, Dad, you know, what do you think? He said, hmm. Well, there was a couple of times where you should have passed in. Remember that one you missed? I said, missed? I just scored 14 goals. So there's always something that you can do better. As long as you keep listening and improving and enjoying it, then you'll go a long way. So, you know, like uh, now I'll ask you two or three questions where you have to choose between the two. So whom do you prefer? Okay, I'll put three actually. Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds, Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool or Guardiola's City? Wow. See, that's difficult because you, you've actually mentioned um, three teams there with... The, everyone thinks, oh, wow, the, the technical ability that they've got is amazing. But also, if the technical ability aligned with the ferocious physical side of the game. I mean, Leeds have the fittest side by a mile. 
Klopp, how he's turned Liverpool into that you know, team, that running machine, they're incredible. Yes, they have the ability as well, they need that. But to do that with that physical side is incredible. And Guardiola, we know the intensity that he plays with uh, is amazing. Um, I should be a politician, I've just picked all three then, shouldn't I? Um, I'm gonna have to go with Leeds, I'm gonna have to, only because I think for me, the difference with Leeds is huge from a year or two ago. I think Liverpool were always, always pretty good and they've got better and better. And City, you know, this is over a number of years, but Bielsa's made an impact in a short space of time. Uh, but yeah, you pick three sides, which I would watch any day of the week, absolutely. So on that note, I'll ask you one final question and maybe you have to put on your politician hat again. So, uh, whom do you prefer, Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi? <sighs> Messi. Uh, everyone knows that clearly you've got one person who has such supremely naturally gifted talent in Lionel Messi. Then you've got this other person who has made himself into the best player in the world or second best player, depending on it. Just with an attitude, a mental strength, which is admirable. The guy is incredible and he's getting better, if anything. The numbers and stats of these two players will last, you know, hundreds of years. And we don't realize that now. And I remember doing um, Spanish football. So I'm on TV doing Spanish football. And every weekend, you know, it's Ronaldo to Messi to Ronaldo hat trick, Messi hat trick. And they become blasé. Oh, they've scored three again. But you've just got to enjoy, you know, these two at, at their peak. Um, if I had to go, it's funny, if I had to go for one, I would have picked Ronaldo, but I'm now going Messi. Messi, 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 Messi. That guy with the ball on his feet it is just a dream. Incredible. So on that note, Tony, thank you so much for talking to me and I wish you all the best for your media work and I hope Leeds win the title this season and you can see them in the Premier League next season. Thank you very much. There's no hope about it. Leeds are going to win. Mark my words. Thank you. Thank you so much.